Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Eno Hall in Simsbury, Connecticut. I am Carol Mulready, the chair of the Voter Service Committee of the League of Women Voters of Greater Hartford. I welcome you here for the debate for first selectmen in Simsbury. We have a number of questions that are framed by the League of Women Voters and many from our live audience. So we look forward to the discussion that will occur. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization. We do not support candidates, but we are very interested in having all voters be informed and participate in government. Is that okay? I am, I am being instructed by our TV people. Is this still going to work for you? How is it for the audience? Better? All right, good. <laughs> so as we get ready to begin here, as I said, we are a nonpartisan but political organization and we are very happy to be here to conduct this debate between two candidates. And we are going to use a format that's called cumulative time format. It allows the candidates to speak to a question for as long as they wish or as short as they wish and they will have approximately 15 to 20 minutes to talk. Each of them has a timer which uh, timer will allow them to see how much time they have left as they go along. So again there's a two minute opening statement. They will have response to questions for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and there will be the opportunity for a closing statement of two minutes also. So to open, we will like to, we, I would like to introduce you to the candidates. We have Cheryl Cook, who is on the audience left, and Eric Wellman, who is on the audience right. Welcome to you both. And uh, let me see, I think, Cheryl, you got to go first for the introductory statement. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. And I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight's debate. And I would like to thank, Sam thank Simsbury Community Television for televising the event. And I would like to thank uh, my opponent and co-selectman, Eric Wellman, for participating in this event with me. For six years, I have been honored to serve as a selectman. I'm also a wife, a mother of three, an attorney. I have run a small law office and a small business. I have volunteered in a variety of roles, from Girl Scout leader and PTO president, to commissioner for the Simsbury Housing Authority, Fidelco puppy raiser, and an advocate for those persons with intellectual disabilities. I'm also a homeowner and a taxpayer, and just like you, I have to live with the effects of my decisions. While serving on the Board of Selectmen, I have worked with a wide range of people on mental health issues, housing, social services, economic development, issues of diversity and inclusion, accessibility, and the transition to a town manager form of government. Simsbury is growing and changing. During a transitional time, the knowledge of where we have been is a big part of understanding where we are going. I've had the privilege of working with leaders on both sides of the aisle to make this transition a success, but there is still much work to be done. In these important times, with state budgets uncertain and a town government in transition, experience matters. The role of the first selectman has changed. The boundaries between the administrative office of the town manager and the legislative prerogatives of the board of selectmen are still being defined. I have built relationships over my years of service to Simsbury in government, business, education, and these give me a unique understanding of the role of the first selectman going forward. I am prepared to work full time every day to serve Simsbury as first selectman. Thank you, Cheryl. And Mr. Wellman. Well, thank you very much. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight, to the Republican and the Democratic town committees, uh, SCTV uh, for ta taping tonight's forum, and of course Cheryl Cook for uh, agreeing to participate. I look forward to spending the next hour with you to articulate my vision for Simsbury, my plan to get there, and my leadership style. 
I live in West Simsbury with my wife, Rachel, and my daughter, Jaina. Uh, Rachel grew up in Simsbury. Jaina is a second grader at Tooten Hills, and I see the youngest member of our audience tonight. I spent the first decade of my career as a journalist and a host in the national public radio system. I saw firsthand the importance of government being open and being transparent, and elected leaders being accessible and accountable. Since then, I have earned my MBA. Uh, I currently work in the private sector, and I help organizations work more efficiently, helping them work smarter. That's the skill set that I bring to town government, and I want to ensure that we're making data-driven decisions so that we're making absolutely the most of your tax dollars. My vision for Simsbury is for a town that's a top town to live in, learn in, work in, and play in. To do that, we need to continue to invest in the things that make our town special, whether it's our incredible schools, our beautiful open space, our services, our infrastructure. But we need to ensure that our town is affordable. I have a plan to do that, and it includes three parts. First is cutting spending where it's not adding value to our residents. Second is consolidating areas within our own government where we have duplication. And the third is continuing to grow our tax base with sensible economic development. Over the next hour, I look forward to articulating what we've already done over the past two years and what I look forward to doing if I have the privilege of serving again. Thank you, Mr. Wellman. At this point, our timers are going to set their clocks for 15 minutes. And we will begin the questions at this point. And if there are still some really good questions in the wings, we will extend our question period if uh, it is so desired. All right, the first question is, um, something that the League of Women Voters became aware of uh, since it spent time at the legislature last year uh, for the 2019 session. A task force was established, established to study ways that municipals and state governments and regional bodies can work together. The report is due in February 2020, just before or at the beginning of the session. How would you describe Simsbury's response to the call for more cooperation between and among these groups? And Mr. Wellman, you get that question first. I think cooperation is absolutely vital. If you were designing Connecticut today from the ground up, you would not have 169 towns that all have duplicative services. Um, that's number one. Um, I have been a proponent, um, one, of wanting to work uh, with other towns where it makes sense, but also ensuring that Simsbury is appropriately working with itself. And what I mean by that is you see examples in our own government where we have duplication of back office services between our Board of Education and our town. One example is that we have two finance departments. Um, we have two IT departments. And I put my process improvement hat on and I say, why the heck do we do it that way? Is that the, the best way, the most efficient way, the most cost effective way to deliver services to our residents? I believe that one of the key things that we need to do to keep Simsbury affordable, which I think is one of our central challenges, is making sure that we are effectively working not just with ourselves, but with, uh, with other towns and other regions where it makes sense. Thank you. Ms. Cook. Thank you. Um, I would agree with Eric that uh, I think Simsbury is very open to regionalization opportunities. Um, we have not only explored cost savings whenever possible for resource, resource sharing with our neighboring communities, and I can give you an example of, say, um, we have shared uh, public works equipment with neighboring towns so that each town does not have to buy a large paving machine. Um, we can coordinate our schedules and share some large equipment between our two departments. Um, even small measures like that really help our budget you know, to save money and it helps build relationships with the towns around us. Over the course of, of my terms on the Board of Selectmen, we have switched to, say, electronic meeting materials, cutting down our, our waste um, with too much paper being produced for meetings, using community partners and volunteers where we can, and accessing more grants for projects. Thank you. 
Any further? Okay. The next question goes to Ms. Cook first. What would your economic development policy look like? Is there any big opportunity in Simsbury that you could address? I think we have lots of opportunities in Simsbury. Um, I have worked on the new Economic Development Commission and Eric and I have both served as a working committee for that new group. And I think the key to our economic development is balancing our resource challenges and ensuring Simsbury's long-term viability. Um, for example, the expansion at Ensign Bickford is, is a key example of how experience and knowing the right programs and opportunities, we were able to leverage a great incentive for EB's growth and at the same time guarantee, guaranteeing new and high paying jobs for Simsbury. And I will make it a priority as first selectman to personally work with our businesses to improve relationships with our existing businesses and our property owners to make sure that their goals are met and to respond to their issues. Okay, Mr. Wellman. Sure, when, when we think about the purpose of economic development, um, one, it's something that enhances the quality of life in our community. It's also, I believe, one of the key ways in which that we keep our taxes in check. Uh, Connecticut is uh, really limited in terms of the opportunities that towns have uh, to, to tax their residents. We're far more reliant on the property tax uh, than uh, towns in other states, and there are um, more equitable ways to do it. Uh, but in Connecticut, we have the property tax, which means that if we are going to keep taxes in check, it means we have to continue to grow. Um, I think, uh, as uh, my colleague mentioned, Ensign Bickford is a phenomenal example where they're investing $10 million in that facility, and we worked um, hand in hand to make sure that they didn't pick a site in Colorado, that they didn't pick a site in California, that they picked Simsbury, and they understood the value in that. Uh, I think another example is we're working uh, hand in hand with uh, the owners of underutilized properties, including the Andes Plaza, which I think is just one of the most strategically important parcels in our town because of where it's located and how underutilized it is today. And if reelected, uh, having uh, allowing that property uh, to live up to its full potential would be just among my highest priorities. Okay, Ms. Cook, you want to address that anymore? Well, I think that um, while I agree that Andes is certainly an un underutilized property, um, what will make it a viable part of our downtown again is working with the owners to find a solution that works for them. Um, we have to respect the private property owner's vision and we have to work with them to make sure that vision sits, fits into what Simsbury's vision is for the center of our town. And as Eric said, it is a very important piece, but we have to establish those personal relationships in order to make the property owner feel comfortable working with the town and to establish trust in that relationship. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Who went first the last time? You, I go you next. Did. Yeah. Um, as we're talking about uh, the development, there's a question here from uh, our audience about balancing the desire to preserve Simsbury's character with the need to grow the grand list. So that's always a little bit of conflict. Can you address, Ms. Cook, how you would approach that? Certainly, and that is the per perennial tug of war for um, a town like Simsbury. Um, we value our small town character, we value the quaint nature of our downtown, and the ability for people to walk in town and find all the services they need. However, uh, we do rely on property taxes to fund our services, and I think that we have to find the right balance between new growth, which sometimes can look shocking and sometimes people are not happy seeing the, the new growth that comes up. However, um, we have to make sure that we are providing guidance to those boards and commissions um, as to our vision for what we see for Simsbury. 
Okay, Ms. Wellman. Yeah, so as part of my campaign, one of the things that I've had the privilege to do is go door to door and speak with literally hundreds of our residents. And I always ask them, uh, you know, what's on your mind or what are your concerns? And I would say that this question really speaks to the heart of it uh, because the concerns are twofold. The top two concerns, number one is the taxes that we all pay. And the second concern is the growth. And it's just so interesting to me because those two things are diametrically opposed. We grow, which allows us to keep taxes in check. But I think our opportunity and our responsibility is how do we grow in a way that maintains what makes Simsbury special so that we're being proactive about maintaining those sight lines of Talcott Ridge the beautiful barns on the north side of town where I see people take beautiful pictures at sunset, uh, the farms that make our community so special. You know, when I think about the apartments, and I think it's really the apartments that people are responding to, Apartments are a living format. If you speak to any of the developers, they will tell you they are very much in demand right now. I think for me it's more about where are those apartments located? Are they sort of an island amongst themselves or are they near a walkable, bikeable uh, downtown with public transportation so they're serving as a catalyst for economic development? So they're putting feet on a sidewalk and maybe even bringing new businesses to town as a result. That to me is what the opportunity is, and one that I don't think we've fully seized at this time. But when we think about being proactive about managing that growth, a few things come to mind. I led the Board of Selectmen when the, the solar farm was coming in really fighting to make sure that we were going to be preserving three of the most visible barns so that those wouldn't be destroyed as part of the process. We're also in the process of making changes through our zoning code to make it easier for farms to diversify their sources of revenue. And Myself and I know other members of the Board of Selectmen are always very open to opportunities to strategically acquire open space parcels where it makes sense so that we preserve those beautiful vistas. It's just so important. Okay, Ms. Cook. Thank you. Um, I, I was there at the beginning of the solar farm controversy. And um, one of the great things about Simsbury is when people feel strongly about something, they come out and tell you. And we filled this hall with discussion regarding that solar farm. And there are two sides to every story. On number one, we'd like to encourage renewable energy wherever we can. Um, but the people who live near it thought, you know, this was an intrusion on their space and it was ruining their view. But I think um, the prior board in bringing the lawsuit was trying to protect both our open space and the view and encourage the development of renewable energy. So we we found that if we eliminated that parcel on the south side of Hoskins next to Squadron, that really helped the homeowners that were abutting it, and we were able to do enough screening for the panels so that um, it wasn't as visible from the road. And I think that's just a great example of how our boards have worked together to, to get to a result that is a good compromise between the issues that were brought up by all of our residents. Okay. There's some, uh, you mentioned apartments along uh, in the town, and there is a question about apartments um, along Route 10. Question about is there any possibility of state assistance for those apartments? Um, so that would be one subsection of a question. And the other would be do you support a policy, a town policy? for affordable and or mixed use housing for the town. I think when we uh, when we talk about affordable housing, I think it it can often get confused with the uh, affordable housing by statute where uh, developers are able to uh, come in, build denser housing than would otherwise be allowed, like is being proposed on Climax Road. And then uh, as part of that statute, 20% of those units have to be quote unquote affordable. Uh, last I checked, uh, that definition of affordable is about $275,000. Uh, which is perhaps more affordable than other housing in Simsbury, but it doesn't meet my true definition 
of affordable. Um, but then I think you know, there's the other definition where if you go onto Zillow and you just look, what are the properties for sale in Simsbury? And you can see uh, properties in Simsbury that you can acquire all the way from the low 200s all the way on up. And I, you know, one of the things I was thinking about with the apartments as well is that the apartments are an increasing way that people who may not have the money for a down payment for a house can still get into Simsbury while they save up for that down payment. And then once they have the money for a down payment and, they're, and they are ready to start a family, we're often seeing people buying houses and, um, and, and, and houses, houses turn over. The, you know, the number one reason why people come to our town is for our, for our incredible schools. And I see the, uh, the apartments are one way to, to, to bring in those younger professionals before they're ready to uh, buy those houses. But back to the issue of affordable housing options. You know, I fully believe that we're a stronger community when we're a diverse community. And I am supportive of building upon Simsbury's socioeconomic diversity uh, through policies that encourage more affordable housing. Thank you. Ms. Cook. Thank you. Well, I have served on the Simsbury Housing Authority uh, Board of Commissioners since 2011. And I can tell you we do have some housing which is affordable even to those who live only on a disability payment. Um, we call it the safest and, and best housing that nobody knows of. We also have independent living units at the Owen Murphy Apartments that are available for really minimal rent um, with state assistance to people who are eligible. But those, those numbers of those housing units are limited. Um, we now have a new development at Cambridge Crossing, which has workforce housing units. And the income barriers are big. Um, and it is, it's sad in a way that a family that earns $80,000 is not eligible for workforce housing. Um, and I think we can do better than that. Um, we have to, balance the needs of the property owners who are developing their property with the needs of the, the population that may not be as well off as, as the rest of us. And I think that part of the barrier to having really affordable housing in this town is transportation. We have such limited transportation options that people who actually take advantage of our very affordable housing, um, such as the Ojakian um, housing up at Dorset Crossing or at the Housing Authority, have such limited opportunities for transportation to get anywhere that we find ourselves as a very isolating community. And if we don't improve on our transportation options, we are not going to be able to attract true affordable housing and foster true diversity in our population. Okay, anything else? Okay. Uh, next question. What is your opinion um, on Airbnbs in Simsbury? Are you for or against? Ms. Cook, you start. I don't think that's really... Um, a fair question of for or against. I think we have had very successful Airbnb rentals here in Simsbury. We have had some that have had incidents where uh, neighbors have been disturbed, and I understand that. Um, again, we have to balance the needs of the neighborhood with the needs of people to perhaps generate extra income by renting out a room for the occasional stay. And I don't think we should deprive a homeowner of the opportunity to earn that extra income if they need it. Um, however, that has to be tempered by regulations that regarding the length of the stay and perhaps guests available at the house. Okay, Mr. Wellman. Yeah, I agree. Um, when my family travels, we almost exclusively stay at Airbnb properties. So I thought what a, a hypocrite I would be if we banned Airbnb in our own town and we didn't, and, and we used it when we go on vacation. So uh, it, 
it is critically important, though, that we protect the rights of neighbors who are near those Airbnbs. And in fact, when we, uh, my family, when we go to Airbnbs in, in various neighborhoods, I am that much more conscious now, wondering how the neighbors maybe feel about me as a stranger in their neighborhood. Uh, which is why, uh, right now, Airbnb is being considered as part of our zoning uh, code, as part of the changes they're considering. If it ends up getting uh, kicked to the Board of Selectmen, I would be very much in favor of creating an ordinance that would create a legal path for people who want to have Airbnbs to uh, be able to do that. Uh, last I knew, uh, we had about 17, um, not all Airbnbs, but short-term rentals listed on various websites. Of those 17, uh, 16 of them were operating without complaint. Um, I know it can be done, and I know especially through regulation that it can be done uh, safely in a way that, that protects the rights of, of nearby property owners. And that's something that I would be in favor of if the Zoning Commission ultimately asks the Board of Selectmen to take a look at this. Okay. Okay. Next question. Tell us what other volunteer work you have done in town, other than Board of Selectmen, to make Simsbury a better place. Mr. Wellman. Sure. Um, so I would say that the, the, the very first time that I uh, came to learn um, about really the the power of um, volunteerism and serving on boards was actually when I was living in Cleveland and I served on a board um, of a literacy nonprofit. It was an adult literacy nonprofit called Project Learn. And when I was on that board, I was one of the lead board members that helped to facilitate a merger between that organization and the county library system. Um, it was a uh, two year process that ultimately allowed them to serve so many more people uh, than they were currently serving. And I, I know the question is specific to Simsbury, but I wanted to bring that experience up because it gives you um, the context that when I came to Simsbury, I had worked in the past in journalism and I wanted to be able, to, I've always been interested in politics, interested in current events, and I've always believed in government's ability to make people's lives better. So when I came to Simsbury, I got very involved with the Democratic Town Committee, and when the opportunity arose to run for first selectman, I had the uh, privilege of getting nominated. Um, so this position that I hold right now is my first uh, official volunteer position uh, in Simsbury, but I've had many more in my previous, uh, previous lot. Thank you, Mr. Wallman. Ms. Cook. Thank you. Um, well, as I said in my opening, I, I started being a Girl Scout leader here in Simsbury literally the first day I got here. Um, I was a PTO president at both Squadron Line and Henry James Middle School and ran the Spirit Committee at the high school for several years. Um, outside of the Board of Selectmen, I have served on the board of Simsbury Newcomers and Neighbors, and I remain a member. I take great pride in welcoming new residents to Simsbury and inviting them into my home for activities um, like book group. <laughs> I'm also a Fidelco guide dog puppy raiser, and I, my family and I raise puppies for those who are visually impaired, and we, are, we share that service with a lot of families here in Simsbury, and it has been so rewarding to see those dogs that we have raised guiding a blind person, and we take great pride in that. I also, as I mentioned, have served uh, as a commissioner of the Simsbury Housing Authority since 2011. And for the past, I would say, 20-something years, I'm not exactly sure anymore, I serve on the Human Rights Commission for the State Department of Developmental Disabilities. And through my work on that commission, I am able to help families here in Simsbury who have children with disabilities and intellectual disabilities navigate systems here through my work on the Aging and Disability Commission and my involvement in other groups which advocate for persons with disabilities. Okay. Can I just add one thing? Yes. You know, it reminded me, uh, Joe, when you were talking that when um, I remember sitting down with you at, uh, it was probably Peaberries at the time, but now it's Anna's Kitchen. <laughs> I was. Um, you brought your dog with you, um, <laughs> which I enjoyed. Um, I made a, a point to want to sit down with all five members of the Board of Selectmen, um, other than myself, to have coffee and get to better know uh, your interests and the other ways that you've been involved. It was really important to me. So, 
the, the first selectman in the town charter actually only has two defined powers specifically. Um, one is that they preside over the Board of Selectmen meetings. The other is that they uh, give out liaison and subcommittee assignments. And it was really important to me at the time that we not give out subcommittee and liaison assignments in a way that is partisan. For example, giving the good assignments to one party um, or the other. So I wanted to learn about all those various opportunities so that we were aligning uh, your interests, all of the selectmen's interests on the board um, with their expertise and the things that they're interested in uh, so that the um, so that their uh, subcommittee assignments made sense. Um, and I think I think that we've done that successfully and it, it set, I, I hope, uh, a good tone uh, to start uh, my tenure. Um, really wanting to work in a in a nonpartisan bipartisan fashion. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, do you support an, ordin an ordinance restricting the feeding of wild animals in, S in Simsbury? If not, why not? And what are your proposal, uh, proposals to manage this growing problem? And that goes to you, Ms. Cook. Thank you. Well, I already know who put in that question. Thank you, Melissa. Um, <laughs> but um, when Melissa came to the Board of Selectmen and told us the story, the tragic story of, of her dog and the coyotes, um, the very next day I went out to the neighborhood involved and, and went house to house and, and talked to the residents. And I went to the police department and got copies of the police reports to see exactly what was going on. I talked to the police officers about what they could do and they explained to me, you know, the different measures they had taken to to try to encourage the people who are feeding wildlife to stop. Um, and what I learned was that um, while there, there are some people who insist on feeding wildlife to the detriment of their neighbors, um, despite being warned by the police multiple times, um, they are not going to stop. Um, we can make an ordinance that says that we prohibit the intentional feeding of wildlife in any form. Um, however, I'm, I'm not sure that would exactly solve the problem. But um, people with bird feeders, I think, would have to <laughs> adjust their bird feeding habits first. Um, but I think we can fashion it in a way so that if somebody who is doing that is causing an extreme public nuisance, and by that I mean, you know, actual visible signs of wildlife and extreme behavior, then perhaps we can find a way to do that. And I know the Board of Selectmen is going to have a subcommittee discuss that with our law enforcement officers to make sure that we do it in an effective way. Mr. Well. Yeah. So I appreciate that the question about wildlife was asked. Wildlife is an incredibly difficult topic for us locally because wildlife policy is managed at the state level. The tools that we have locally are far more limited. Uh, but I believe that we need to, uh, we need to use the tools that we have. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that I did is I, uh, along with uh, Selectman uh, Sean Askham, uh, we met with Chief Bolter, we solicited his opinion, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, Sean and I have been close to this because he chairs the Public Safety Subcommittee. And initially there's a, um, a hesitance by our law enforcement community um, to want to uh, move in this direction. Uh, so one of the things the Board of Selectmen did is we passed a non-binding resolution basically asking people during warmer months not to certainly intentionally feed wildlife, don't use bird feeders, don't put your trash out overnight. I think though that you know, the vast majority of residents in Simsbury, when a police officer comes to your door and asks you to do something or not to do something, they will comply. I think in some rare instances uh, we need an ordinance, we need something with more teeth uh, that says uh, you know, that, that allows us uh, to take action um, in an extreme situation, um, as Cheryl pointed out. Um, so that's something that I am uh, in favor of and that work is, uh, is moving forward. Thank you. Um, there is a 350th anniversary of the founding of Simsbury to take place in 2020. There's been a lot of talk about the celebration. Please, please explain 
how you would like to see this special time celebrated. Well, one of the and uh, that does go to you, Mr. Wellman. Yeah, thank you. Well, one of the uh, really you know, special things about, um, we formed uh, the, the 350th uh, Celebration Committee, um, which Cheryl chairs, and one of the really neat things about appointing people to this committee is it brings people uh, together who may not have otherwise worked together uh, from our, you know, the tourism industry, uh, the historical society, uh, our hospitality industry, our performing arts center, and others. And one of the biggest opportunities I've observed as first selectman is there is so much amazing work happening in our community, but it is often disconnected. And I think our opportunity, excuse me, our opportunity in celebrating the 350th and forming this committee to plan a year's worth of, of celebration is bringing these people together and hopefully forming new relationships that are going to, I don't know if they're gonna last another 350 years, but certainly beyond 2020. Ms. Cook. Thank you. Well, as, as Eric said, I am the chairperson of Sims Ray's 350th celebration, and there is not enough time for me to tell you all the things that are going on for the 350th, but, but what I would like to stress, um, similar to Eric, is that in, in starting this committee and in bringing all these people together, um, what we had hoped was, would happen is that people would share their talents and share their interests. And that has been what happened. Um, for instance, we've had our theatrical groups um, have written a play, especially, for, you know, it's our town for Simsbury. And we are so looking forward to having that performed for the town. Um, we have historical tours of the um, historic cemetery in the center of town. Um, we're gonna get a preview this weekend, but um, that is going to be expanded for the 350th celebration. Um, we are opening the new park down at the Flower Bridge, and with that, we are inviting people to come and share their experiences, such as celebrating the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage, um, in, and we are going to have a group come in and, and celebrate that event along with our 350th as just a testament to how much history Simsbury has, has lived through. Um, for River Day, we are going to celebrate our heritage on the river. And we are going to start at the Pinchot Sycamore with um, canoes and kayaks and all sorts of watercraft. And then we're going to have a Huck Finn raft race where we are encouraging all the, the Boy Scout troops have all been involved and they are terrific. Um, build a raft. You only need one adult on the raft to enter. <laughs> and sail down to Curtis Park where we will have a Native American village set up with Native American crafts and other types of historical Native American um, plays and uh, scenarios set up for both children and adults to, to learn about our history with the Native Americans here in Simsbury and to, to look forward to, you know, we have a very dynamic future to look forward to and part of what we're trying to do is celebrate that historic past, celebrate the talents of the people that are here now and to look forward to a dynamic future where Simsbury only gets better. Okay, and is there anything you will specifically contribute, Ms. Cook? I'm chairing the committee. Chairing the committee. <laughs> I'm in charge of all those people right now. Okay. We are actually taking volunteers online, and um, I have just invited lots of them to a big meeting next week. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Wellman. Great, and I'm, I'm in the process of, uh, of uh, trying to, uh, you know, reaching out to our, our governor and uh, asking him to attend our uh, opening ceremony, which is, um, I believe, next May at First Church. And uh, Cheryl and I co-signed that letter, <laughs> and uh, and you know we. We would be honored to have his presence. Um, and I just look forward to celebrating with the residents of, of Simsbury during this just you know tremendous anniversary. Okay, thank you. What is the very first thing you will do when you are elected to the office? Um, I think it's you, Mr. Wellman. I think that, uh, so I want to continue to build upon the work that we've been doing, but I think one of my absolute top priorities, if I'm fortunate enough to serve another term, is extending the, um, the Greenway uh, to Terrafil. Uh, between uh, Terrafil and, uh, and Route 10 is a pretty treacherous uh, piece of road. This is not just about recreation. This is really about economic development. Early in my tenure, I met with the uh, 
uh, first select woman of Canton. And I said, how did Collinsville become Collinsville? And all of the people there who were part of that will tell you that the bike path through Collinsville made a tremendous difference. I believe that Terraville has all of the assets of Collinsville, a river, uh, walkability, historic charm, we don't have a bike path, and I think it's a real catalyst for economic development. Um, and, and beyond that, then investing in streetscape improvements, uh, going out, seeing if we can get state and federal grants uh, to invest in those improvements, and really allow Terrafil to live up to its potential is just one of my highest priorities. Okay, Ms. Cook. Thank you. Um, my first priority is going to be to go out and have some personal conversations with our business community. Um, I think in the transition, they have been somewhat um, lost, and I don't want to say they're confused, but um, it has been difficult for our, our local business leaders um, to navigate what is now a, a different set of rules for both the First Selectman's Office and the Town Manager's Office. And I think we need to, to do some work in a personal way to um, clarify what those roles are and what each of those two offices can do for them. So I think that that would be my first thing and I would like to follow that up with discussing property improvements for those underutilized properties that we talked about um, a little earlier on. Thank you. At this point, I have two more questions and I would like to timers to add, just to put four minutes on your timer, because you were both about at the same level with the use of time. So we do have a little extra time, therefore um, we'll go ahead with uh, a couple more questions. Mr. Williamson, you, well, you get this first. Uh, Simsbury has an aging population. What can our local government do to make life easier for seniors who want to stay in their homes? Is that my question? You're first. Okay, great. You, know, you ask a, a parent of any school-aged child if they understand the value of the taxes they pay, and they do, because we have just some of the best schools in the country. But then when you talk to uh, uh, people my parents' age who are empty nesters or who are on the verge of retirement or who have been retired for many years, it is harder to see that value. And I think that we need to continue to invest in things that make Simsbury worth living in even after your children have left the house. And just some of those examples include, you know, connecting Simsbury, uh, the center of Simsbury to the river, the Farmington River, uh, through the new park at the Flower Bridge. Um, for those uh, seniors who are who are uh, healthy and able to enjoy um, our multi-use trails, we need to continue to invest in those. Investing in our open spaces, in our cultural assets like the Performing Arts Center. But then I think it's important to realize that there are many seniors in our community who have much more fundamental needs. Um, things like, as we talked about earlier, transportation. And that's why in the coming months we are looking at testing a program that I, I don't think it's named yet, but I'm calling it Uber for Seniors. It's a program where seniors who meet certain income thresholds will be able to request rides from volunteer drivers who are driving town vehicles and are trained by the town. That's one example of improving transportation options to things like the supermarket or to a doctor's appointment. We're also working with our Aging and Disability Commission on something we're calling a loan locker. It's basically a lending library for durable medical equipment, things like walkers and crutches that would be available for free to any Sims resident uh, who needs one, um, assuming one is available. We are on the verge of having that ready to go. We just need a space to put it. So that's the final step. I've also been incredibly supportive of our Aging and Disability Commission, which is in the process of working with AARP to make Simsbury an age-friendly community. Thank you. Ms. Cook. Thank you. I am the Board of Selectmen Liaison to the Aging and Disability Commission, and um, we are moving forward with the Age-Friendly Community Initiative. Um, as I said before, um, we have a real risk here in Simsbury of isolation in our seniors. And um, for all the reasons that we have discussed, um, we need to have better transportation options for seniors. And whether that's expanding dial-a-ride or forming a new transportation system that will assist seniors in getting where they need to go, um, I will fully support that. Um, the other thing that I have done during my course of my 
term on the Board of Selectmen is um, through the Community for Care, which I chair, um, we have provided programming to educate caregivers and seniors themselves on the dangers of, of depression forming in, in seniors who will remain isolated. Um, there is also a significant uh, risk for seniors uh, for suicide and drug addiction. And most people don't recognize that our senior population is one of the fastest growing populations for mental health issues. And through the Community for Care, we have try been trying to provide programming um, to help seniors and their caregivers because the caregivers also become isolated in that caregiving function and we need to be able to support them. And through our social services department, we have been working on programs and outreach to try to to contact those caregivers and those seniors to make sure that they're getting um, regular contact just from, from other people, um, whether it's our books to home program at the library or an occasional phone call, just to make sure you're okay. Um, there's a lot of ways we can reach out um, to help our senior population not be at risk for all those very bad things that might happen. But as I said, we need to start with transportation. Thank you. Final question, and this will go to um, Ms. Cook first. Mm -hmm. What plans, if any, do you have to make Simsbury a sustainable, energy efficient, and clean energy town? Thank you. Um, well, on the Board of Selectmen, we have approved the uh, Sustainable Connecticut program and our clean energy task force is, is at the present time working on the various requirements for Simsbury to be eligible for the different levels of program that works a lot like our, our bike friendly community program where we have bronze, silver, and gold status. Um, we are, are just getting started in that and filling out our first applications, but, but I think that in Simsbury, we, we actually have a head start. We have been working on our, a lot of our public buildings to install solar panels. Um, we have been trying to install LED lighting and all of our lights. And not only does that provide a savings to the taxpayer, but it, it helps promote a cleaner environment also. Okay, Mr. Wellman. Yeah, uh, just like, um uh, Cheryl, I've been very supportive of our Sustainable CT initiative, um, as well as another initiative that our Clean Energy Task Force has really just uh, just started, which is that they're in the process of developing a clean energy plan that would uh, would put Simsbury on a path, really in decades from now, to being 100% uh, uh, powered uh, by renewable sources. It, is in a draft form, it needs to be uh, vetted through um, our business community, it needs feedback from our residents, but if uh, re-elected, I would uh, make it a priority to, to shepherd that through the process so that the Board of Selectmen would ultimately adopt it. Look, I believe that climate change is just one of the the most defining issues of our time. And it's not just a national issue. This is not, you know, the, the stuff we're talking about locally, this is not just feel good stuff so we can pat ourselves on the back and say, oh look, Simsbury did its part. We've been talking a lot about economic development tonight and sustainability can be a part of an economic development strategy. It can save us money. It's good public policy. We also passed uh, about a year, a year, year and a half ago, a water protection ordinance so that in the case of a drought, we are proactive instead of reactive, being able to protect our water supply. Something I was incredibly supportive of and very proud that we were able to bring to fruition. Thank you. Ms. Cook, oh, all done? Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We will now turn to our closing statements. So the timers will adjust their clocks for the two minute closing statement. And uh, Eric Wellman has the closing statement first. Okay, thank you. Thank you tonight for the opportunity uh, to be here with you to allow me to elaborate on my vision for Simsbury and my plan to get there. My vision, again, is to make Simsbury a, a top place to live, learn, work, and play. And again, I think our biggest challenge is that issue of affordability. And we've talked about a lot of really good things tonight, but none of those things matter if we can't get things done. I think politics in Washington is fundamentally broken. And that's not a partisan comment, it's both sides of the aisle. There are things that Democrats and Republicans agree on that they need to start working on. And locally, 
I've wanted to focus on the 80% of things that we agree on. And our board, um, and I can only take partial credit for this, has gotten along really, really, really well. Um, you know, it's not just getting to the right place, it's about getting to the right place in the right way. And that means, to me, being open to all opinions, even opinions that you might disagree with. It means being transparent. It means being accessible to all of our residents. And I am accessible to our residents seven days a week. My cell phone number is 860-424-1323. Uh, 860-424-1323. You can call me seven days a week and I will be glad to meet with any Simsbury residents. It means putting party and policy as politics aside and doing the right thing for Simsbury. Not some of the time, all of the time. I'm a Democrat and I'm a proud Democrat. But first and foremost, I'm a resident of this amazing town. This is a town that I love, that my wife and daughter love, and serving as your first selectman has been just one of the true honors of my life, and I ask for your support for another term so that we can keep this good work going. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Cheryl Cook, closing Thank you. statement. I'm not gonna give out my cell phone number because as my family knows, I never answered anyway. <laughs> it's a real problem. Um, but in closing, I'd like to say that uh, being first selectman is, is no longer about being a business manager. We have a town manager who runs the day-to-day -day operations of our town. It is about using experience learned in local government, in Simsbury, in our schools, in our meetings with people from all different backgrounds and political persuasions to move policy forward. And I think we've done a good job of that, you know, as a board. Um, I've been on a 3-3 board most of my time serving, and we have gotten a lot done. And it is about relationships with people and taking the time to listen. It is about effectively leading the Board of Selectmen, being transparent with the public and with my fellow selectmen, working effectively with the other boards and commissions, and using that hard-won experience to lead Simsbury forward. And I'm asking for your vote on November 5th so I can have that opportunity. Thank you very much. And the audience may now applaud. <laughs> I'd like to thank both the candidate, candidates on behalf of the League of Women Voters and the citizens of Simsbury for dedicating the time and effort that you give to this civic job um, and taking this challenge of running for office. We have a, an audience that's watching this live in the auditorium. There's also live TV. I hope all of you will ask your neighbors and friends and voters in Simsbury to watch this debate so that they are better informed when they go to the polls on November 5th, 2019. I also want to thank our league timers and the screeners who um, went through the questions to make sure we didn't have duplicates from our audience. Again, thank you very much, and thank you to Simsbury Public Television, Community Television, um, for always the good job that you do. Thank you all. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs>